So today I'm going to be going over what I think is most important for realism drawing. This does not apply to all styles of drawing, and this is only how I choose to draw. There are definitely other ways to do it. But the things i found to be most important are the reference photo, shading, color, and details. I chose this photo of a parrot to be my reference. A reference photo is where a realistic drawing starts. I don't think there are many people that can draw something anatomically correct from memory. A reference photo should have good clarity, good contrast, and clear details. It's still possible to draw from a poor reference photo, it just requires a lot more thought and effort. It's important to get an accurate sketch from a photo, and for that I break it down into shapes. Lines work better for me than circles do. It also helps to figure out proper portions when I use lines versus circles. I put most of my focus on getting the facial proportions right. Also remember to move your arm and not just your wrist, it's a lot easier to draw a straight line that way. and it's okay to erase however many times you need to. I'm sketching darker than I normally would so that it shows up on camera. There are other methods for sketching like the grid method, but this is my preferred method. When you're sketching, make sure to look for any symmetries or what lines up with what. Like in this one, the eye lines up with the front of the wing. So this is how my sketch looks. I'm going to lighten it and just keep the necessary lines. And the next important part of drawing is shading. I often map out the shadows as well, which is what I'm doing now. I'm using a blue marker. Um, it can be easier to see which area is darkest if you turn the picture to black and white. The right side is much more shadowed than the left. The light is coming from behind the bird on the left here. My picture is looking a little crazy now, but hey, that's okay. And the next part of drawing is color. If you're drawing in color, of course, which I usually do. I'm going to use watercolor for this. Color is usually the most difficult part, and some people can see accurate colors easily, but some people need more practice. Uh, color is almost never just one color, and you'll rarely find a primary color in nature. Some people study the color wheel to get better at color mixing. All I think you really need to know is the opposite colors, which are the colors directly across from each other on the color wheel. The reason for this is shading. Adding black to darken a color usually makes it look murky and it doesn't have a good outcome. Instead, adding the opposite color can work much better. Shadows are usually cool colors. If you think of snow, the shadows aren't really gray, are they? Usually they're tinted blue or purple. Only the brightest colored areas should stay untouched. I'm using watercolor here because it's easy to show how colors layer on top of each other, but this applies to most colored mediums. And white in a picture is rarely true white. The face of this bird is fairly shadowed, so I'm using a mix of blue and brown as a shadow. This watercolor palette doesn't even have a black. I'm using a watered down version of the same color here for the shadows, and you can see how different that looks. I have the most basic colors mapped out, but he's looking kind of funky now, right? It doesn't have much for details. There's no texture, the face is looking much too smooth, and it doesn't have any feathers. You don't have to add every detail to make something look realistic, but it's important to create the right texture. The face needs to have a very different texture from the feathers. Even the beak has these grooves, and it's not perfectly smooth. A short feather or fur texture is made by a bunch of thin lines. The face has a lot of wrinkles in it. And it also has these short feathers sticking out. This is where you would use a smaller brush or a sharper pencil. You don't have to copy every detail, just find the pattern. 
be patient with it because it does take a while. I did also manage to spot a paint above the parrot's head here. Oh well. Here where the feathers get longer, like fur, they tend to grow in clumps. I do have a tendency of oversaturating the colors in a drawing, but I like it that way. It doesn't need to be exactly like the photo. And my solution to splattering paint is just to fling some color around in the background. But that's kind of the fun of it. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Who would even know if it's a mistake? This isn't my best work. It doesn't look just like the photo, and some of the colors are off, and some of the textures aren't perfect. But I had fun making it, and that's the important part. Remember, if you want to draw realistically, you need a good reference photo, shading, color, and details. But most importantly, you need time. You won't finish a drawing in 15 minutes unless it's like 3 by 3 inches. I know it's annoying, but practice is key. It takes time to learn, and it takes time to draw. You don't have to finish every drawing. I know I don't. And you don't have to show anyone your drawings. Nobody ever has to see them. Not all my drawings are perfect, and yours don't have to be either. Just have fun with it. I hope this video was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments.